All right, let's start with the big story that we are tracking on Vion at this hour, where the protests in Hong Kong are intensifying. Remember, clashes had erupted after thousands of pro-democracy demonstrators in Hong Kong had gathered for a 13th straight weekend, defying a police ban on mass gatherings. Now, despite the incidents that took place yesterday, what is presently unfolding in Hong Kong is on your screens. These are live visuals as thousands of protesters have yet again decided to flout the ban on large gatherings that's been imposed by the police. Remember, no permission has been given by the police for these protesters to in fact take to the streets in such large numbers. Now, one of the stated objectives of the protesters is to try and surround the Hong Kong International Airport. And that is exactly what we saw a little while back when a tense standoff was beginning to unfold between the police who are ready with their riot gear and the demonstrators who have gathered around the airport. And these are, of course, scenes from Hong Kong where, remember, there are different places where the protesters have gathered and the administration is a part of its efforts in clamping down on the protesters has suspended the metro rail service so that people do not easily mobilize. And apart from this, the bus services we are given to understand have been cancelled as well. And the protesters have been told that they cannot wear face masks because face masks provide a level of anonymity wherein the protesters would not be easily identified. And therefore, the administration in Hong Kong had stated that they intend to ban the face covering masks and this is what the scene looks like even as we speak and as the evening progresses in Hong Kong one expects that there could be more turbulence that could unfold on the streets and especially in the last two weekends the protests have taken an increasingly a more violent turn the police yesterday for the first time during the course of these protests used blue dyed ink to, uh, in fact, put it, uh, to use it as a means of crowd control. And apart from that, the protesters have, of course, stated that they are not going to relent anytime soon. They have stated that they are fighting to ensure that the autonomy of Hong Kong is not in, in any way eroded further. And Patrick Falk, our correspondent from Hong Kong, is, of course, joining us live now from the city. Now, Patrick, let, let me begin by asking you this. You know, we witnessed what took place yesterday. And despite the fact that the police has not given permission for the protesters to gather in such large numbers, give us a sense of what is presently unfolding at the Hong Kong International Airport. Well, that's right. A court injunction has been issued and there is a ban on people heading to the airport. But again, as we've seen so many times over the past few weeks, the protesters have defied that ban. And uh, I'm actually standing about a kilometre, two kilometres away from the departure halls at Hong Kong International Airport. And uh, as you can see behind me, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of protesters clad in black once away, once again uh, out in full force. Some of them are heading towards the airport. Some of them are heading to uh, the close by town of Tung Chung. So we expect there possibly to be some uh, unrest there. That's a possible uh, flashpoint uh, in the next few hours. Uh, but look, it, it is absolutely chaotic out here. And it's, it's remarkable in many ways because, you know, we saw some very violent scenes take place last night, but that hasn't deterred the protesters. If anything, you might argue that it's actually spurred them on to come out. And it's really quite amazing, whatever anybody says, the amount of energy that the protesters have to keep on coming out like this. But look, as you mentioned a moment ago, there is severe traffic disruption. If I turn around uh, this way a little bit, you'll see that the protesters have set up these barriers to stop the traffic coming through. Now, somebody's just opened uh, one lane there, but I imagine the protesters are going to block that off again pretty soon. And uh, the airport express, the train that brings people from uh, Central and Kowloon to uh, Hong Kong International Airport, uh, that's been shut off completely. So passengers aren't allowed to uh, board trains, although uh, rather strangely, the tra trains are still running and they are coming along the uh, train tracks, but the, the trains are completely empty, no passengers on board at all. Absolutely indeed. And one of the other aspects that, that people would be looking at very closely is this turn towards violence that the protests have taken place, especially in the last couple of weeks. Now, this, this of course, is a leaderless protest, but there are prominent leaders who are pro-democracy activists in Hong Kong. 
has there been any condemnation from them in terms of the violence that took place yesterday and also in the preceding weekend? Well, as a matter of fact, there were further arrests that took place of prominent opposition figures. And again, that could well be another reason why people have turned out again in, in such large numbers today. What's very clear to most people is that the strategy of clamping down on the protest movement just simply uh, isn't working. Many people will tell you that this is a crisis which requires a political solution. And all we're seeing now is, you know, as the weeks uh, have gone on, and we're talking about nearly three months now, you know, the protesters have dug their heels in and uh, they've upped their resistance. And that's also resulted in the police authorities uh, responding with greater force. And there's just this endless cycle of escalating violence. And it's quite clear at this point that, you know, this unrest isn't going to uh, end anytime soon. And it does appear as though uh, exactly what uh, Beijing won't have wanted. Uh, and that's for these uh, this unrest to overlap the October 1st uh, celebrations, uh, marking the founding of the People's Republic of China. Absolutely, indeed. And that brings me to my last question to you. You know, uh, the world, of course, is watching these protests unfold and Beijing is watching them very very, very closely. Uh, the protests have gone on for well over three months now. Is there any indication at all that is coming in from Beijing that perhaps Beijing may play a more active role, if not get directly involved in clamping down on these protesters? Well, some might argue that Beijing is the only one playing any role as such, uh, given the report that we've heard from Reuters saying that the chief executive already advised Beijing that uh, uh, withdrawing the bill would be the best way to defuse the crisis. And uh, a lot of people feel that, it, that the fact that Beijing has rejected that is a, a clear example to them of uh, the central government undermining the principle of one country, two systems. Uh, but, you know, it's hard to say whether or not Beijing is going to do anything more uh, other than what they've done for the time being. Uh, there does seem to be less of a likelihood, uh, you might argue, that of uh, PLA troops rolling in. Because as we've seen, the police in Hong Kong have stepped up force. Uh, and, and we've seen already that they are capable of handling the violence, even though they are outnumbered. They have got the equipment and uh, the know-how and the strategy, uh, it seems, to contain the violence. But that doesn't mean it's going to end. Uh, we're just going to keep on uh, seeing things continue as they are without any solution to what's happening uh, as it stands. All right, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed, Patrick, for, for joining us and getting us all the updates from Hong Kong as they are unfolding. We'll, of course, come back to you as the protest proceeds through the day. Meanwhile, let's now turn our attention to France, where the Yellow West protesters in France, which had lost out a bit of steam over the last few weeks, have now again resumed with greater vigor this weekend. Almost about 200 protesters gathered in Paris on Saturday. The protesters held up banners and chanted as they marched from the French capital's Palace de Gambetta Square. And they've continued with their demands for reforms which would give them higher purchasing power and also fiscal justice from President Emmanuel Macron. Now, the movement, which began last November, had lost a bit of its steam in recent months as the turnout had remained well below the earlier peaks that had been seen in the months of November and December in 2018. And reports state that the Emmanuel Macron government had briefly also tried to appease the protesters through tax cuts. However, unhappy with the measures, the protesters have now upped the ante yet again as the Yellow West movement's anniversary is nearing on the 21st of this month.